Um, yeah, we did. We'll let you can make that up in a second. Okay, so this first one, nine and one sixth percent. What's that going to become as a fraction? It's going to become fifty-five over one hundred. Well, nine, nine and one sixth over one hundred is where we start. Then we have to do 9 times 6 is 54 plus 1 is 55 over 6. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to multiply by 6 over 1 to get rid of the fraction. So the 6 cross cancels. We have 55 over 600. And we can divide by 5 to reduce it, giving us 11 over 120. Forty three point seven five percent becomes forty three point seven five over one hundred. Multiplying by one hundred on top and bottom to get rid of the decimal. So four thousand three hundred or forty three thousand seventy five over ten thousand. Both of those can be divided by and divide by five. Which will give us what, 875 over 2000. Divide by 5 again. Give us 175 over 400. Well, let's keep dividing by 5, I guess. It'll give us 35 over 80. Divide by 5 again is 7 sixteenths. How many of you got the 11 over 120? Perfect. How many of you got 7 sixteenths? Good deal. How many have no clue where either one of those came from? Okay, we'll have to work on that a little bit more with you then. 8.7% then is a decimal. What's that? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not correct. We'll have to go over that some more. So 8.7% converted to a decimal. 0 0.087. 290% is 2.9. Very good. Convert to a percent. One and five eighths. So the first thing we have to do is you have to convert that into an improper fraction. So that's going to be one times eight is eight, plus five is thirteen eighths over one hundred. Cross multiply and divide. Thirteen times one hundred is thirteen hundred. Divided by eight. Gives us 162.5. So that's 162.5%. Point zero nine seven as a percent is just 9.7%. How many of you got the 162.5? Just ran out of time or? Okay. The 100 here? That's just always part, a percent is always out of 100. So you're gonna that's always just a constant in the problem. Usually usually I'd set it up like this with the one hundred, the percent over one hundred first. And then the thirteen over eight over here. This is always the percent then, because what's over the one hundred is the percent. Yep, up here. Yeah, because it, because it's a percent, it always goes over one hundred. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we spent the time yesterday doing the conversions. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we actually do some calculations with these percents. And we're going to start out with the simple calculations like this. Blank is 30% of 80. And we've, we had this little proportion for, cal for converting our fractions right here into percents. 
we're going to use that same proportion. And I'm always going to start with my percent. I have 30%, so we know that's 30 over 100. On the other side, then, we have to match up. There's two other numbers in the problem. In this case, there's the missing number and there's the 80. One of them matches up with the 30%. Well, if we read this, it says blank is 30%. So that missing number matches up with the 30. Of 80, you can think of that as out of 80. So 80 goes here. So now I'm going to cross, multiply, and divide. 30 times 80 is 2,400. And I'm going to divide by the 100, gives me 24. Or I might have, what is 130% of 70? This one's a similar problem. I have the percent. 130% becomes 130 over 100. Over here, again, I have the 70, and I have a missing number, the what in this case. Which one matches up with the 130? What is 130%? My missing number matches up with the 130. Of 70, again, I can think of that as out of 70, so the 70 goes on bottom. You can also, by the way, think of this 100 as it's also a percent, as that's the whole thing or the starting amount. So once again, we'll cross multiply. 130 times 70 is 9,100. Divided by 100 is 91. 91 is 130% of 70. This one here, written kind of backwards, but it's the same type of problem. 70%, 70 over 100, of 30 is blank. So again, we have a missing number and we have the 30. We got to figure out which one matches up with the 70. Well, of 30, and think of that as out of 30, implies that the 30 goes on bottom. Also, if I cover that up and I read the problem 70% is blank, it makes sense that the blank goes with the 70. So we cross multiply and divide. 70 times 30 is 2100. Divided by 100 is 21. 70% of 30 is 21. We'll come back to that in just a second. Yep. Yeah, that's a valid way of doing it, too. <coughs> so here we have 54 is blank percent of 60. Now, I've told you that we always start with the percent. But in this case, we don't have the percent. I still start with the percent. It just becomes blank over 100. Now on the other side, we have to figure out we, between the 54 and the 60, which one matches up with our missing percent and which one matches up with the 100. Well, here it says 54 is blank percent. So that it makes sense the 54 matches up with our missing percent. Of 60, you can think of that as out of 60. So 60 being on bottom. So cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 54 is 5,400. Divide by 60 is 90. 54 is 90 percent. Bless you. 54 is 90 percent of 60. Blank percent of 30 is 12. So again, we're missing the percent. So we're going to start out with blank over 100. We have the 30 and the 12. Well, this is of 30, again, read out of 30, implying that the 30 goes on bottom. Blank percent is 12, implies the 12 goes with our missing percent. So now we cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 12 is 1,200. Divided by 30 is 40. 40% 40 of 30 is 12.
Here's one a little bit different again. 49 is 70% of blank. So we have the percent this time, so we're going to start there again. 70% is 70 out of 100. Equals. Now we have the 49, and we have a missing number. Well, 49 is 70%. It implies that the 49 goes to the 70. Of blank implies out of blank. implies that missing number goes on bottom. Cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 49 is 4,900. Divided by 70 is 70. 49 is 70% of 70. Forty-eight is one hundred and sixty percent of what number? Well, again, I start with the percent. One hundred and sixty percent becomes one hundred and sixty over one hundred. Over here, what goes on top? Forty-eight. So the blank goes on bottom. Cross multiply. One hundred times forty-eight is forty-eight hundred. Divided by one hundred and sixty is thirty. So 48 is 160% of 30. Twenty percent of blank is 58. So again, I have the percent, so it's percent over 100, so 20 over 100 equals. I have the blank, the missing number, and the 58. Which one goes on top? The 58. Of blank implies out of blank implies that missing number goes on bottom. So I cross multiply and divide. 100 times 58 divided by 20 is 290. 20% 20 of 290 is 58. Now, as Marco brought up, there's another way to do this. It's called the rate method of percents. The way we've been doing it here is called the proportion method. I really like the proportion method because once you get this set up, your calculation is always cross, multiply, and divide. So there's usually, if you can get it set up correctly, there's fewer mistakes. The rate method involves taking your percent and turning it into a decimal. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to take a peek at each of these and show you what that would look like. So for this one, I have 30%. As a rate, that would be 0.3. So what I'm going to do is take that 0.3, I'm going to take the 80 times the 0.3 to get 24. Notice that's my answer. That was really quick and simple. This one here, 130%. Times 1.3, so I take my 70 times 1.3 is 91. Again, I get the same answer, really quick and simple. So why don't, since this looks like it's so quick and simple, why don't I like the rate method so much? Well, because not all the problems are like that. Like this one here, 70%, of course, is 0.7 is a decimal. But I would not take 49 times 0.7. I would have to remember that it's going to be 49 divided by 0.7. Give me the 70. Same here. 160% is 1.6. But it's not going to be 48 times 1.6. It's 48 divided by 1.6. Give me 30. So if I'm doing the rate method... Not only do I have to turn the percent into a rate, but I have to try to remember, do I divide or do I multiply by that rate? And then, of course, there's a third type, which looks like this one. When I don't have the percent, I have to divide. In this case, it would be 54 divided by 60. It gives me 0.9. Then I'd move that decimal point. I convert the decimal into a percent to make it 90%. So the rate method is the way I was actually taught, and I'm good at it, and that's the way I do it when I'm doing things in my head. But if you, if you don't remember everything, you can't figure out which way to use it, it does cause a lot more mistakes. The proportion method here 
is a lot simpler because all you have to do is get everything in the right position and it's always cross multiply and divide. The other thing about the proportion method is when we run into word problems, the proportion method actually helps us figure out the word problems, helps us figure out where to put things. For example, let's say that I tell you that ABC Corporation estimates a net profit as 12% of gross sales. In a quarter where net profit is estimated at $150,000, what were gross sales? Well, I have a percent here. I have 12%, which is 12 over 100. So there's a start. Now let's look at what each of those represents. I have two things I'm talking about in this problem, net profit and gross sales. Which one does the 12% represent? Twelve percent of gross sales. Actually, that would if you think of that as out of, that's telling me that the gross sales probably represents 100% because it's out of the gross sales. Net profit as 12%. The 12% is net profit. Now that once I know that, remember we said the 100% is always either the whole amount or the starting point. The gross sales would be the whole amount in this point, And your net profit is a portion or a piece out of that gross sales. But anyway, now that we have that percent and the piece is labeled, the rest of the proportion is pretty simple here. We have 150,000. Does that represent net profit or gross sales? Net profit is estimated at 150,000. So it's 150,000 goes on top. Cross multiply 100 times 150,000 divided by 100. Sorry, 100 times 150,000 divided by 12, I should say. Gives us 1,250,000 1, is our gross sales. Does that make sense? Let's look at some other examples. Um, Let's say you're running a business and you purchase parts for $180. You usually mark up items 8% before you sell them. How much do you mark it up? So I have the 8%, 8 over 100. What's the 8% represent? The markup. The 100% would be the starting amount or the, the original price. But anyway, on the other side over here, we're looking for we're looking for how much you mark it up. So this is the number we're looking for. The $180 has to go on bottom. That is the starting amount. So we can cross multiply and divide. 8 times 180 divided by 100 is going to give us 
$14.40 markup. What do you think? Not so bad? So this one. If you receive a 12% discount, a lot of times, let's say, for those of you in automotive, if you're running your own shop and you buy a lot of parts through a certain supplier, they will give you a preferred customer discount or a mechanics discount, sometimes called. So if you're buying all your parts through a single supplier, you might get an automatic called trade discount of 12%. So if you receive a 12% discount for a savings of $96, What was the full price of the parts? So if 12% again, 12 over 100. What does the 12 represent? It represents a discount. And the, of course, the 100% would be the full price. Well, we're looking for the full price. So that's going to imply to us that we're missing this number on bottom. $96, does that represent the discount? Yeah, a savings of $96 means the discount was $96. So it makes sense to put that on top of the 12. So it'll be 100 times 96 divided by 12, which is going to be... Eight hundred dollars full price. Well, the problems we just did here. Yes, sir. I mean, I came up with eight hundred just in my head. I'm not really sure how, but probably just divided by point one two. Or, um, or like there is. There are easier ways to do it. If you've done enough, some people have done enough of these. They can look at them and they just know what to do. And so there's, there are quicker ways. That when I'm doing these myself, there are a lot of quicker ways of doing it. But what most people struggle with is pulling the information out of the problem, starting here. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Is This is just more of a methodical way of just taking it right down to the very basics and showing every step. If you get good at these, there's a lot of steps you are going to skip. So anyway, what we just did here was some very basic forms of discount or markup problems. We can get a little bit more complex with something like that. Let's say that you are going to mark up parts that you sell. Let's say you are going to, uh, oh, let's say you mark up parts. <laughs> So markup items 15%. How much would you pay for an item? Sorry, how much would you pay? How much would you charge? I should be saying there. Sorry about that. How much would you charge for an item that you pay? Three hundred and fifty dollars for. This one here, we can use just a regular percent like we have been, but there is going to be an easier way of doing it. We have fifteen percent here. We have to be careful to label what each of those means. Fifteen percent is the markup. One hundred percent is what we pay for the item. Is that 15% is based off of what we pay. So over on the other side here, we have the 350. That is what we pay. We cross multiply and divide. 15 times 350 divided by 100 is going to give us what? $52.50, I believe. Is that my answer? No. 
They want to know how much you charge for an item. What we just got is the discount. To find out how much we would charge, we have to take that original price, what we paid of $350, add that markup of $52.50, and get a total of $402.50. That is what we would charge. So you'll notice what we had here was we had what we paid. We added a markup to it to get what we were going to charge for it. And anytime we have a problem dealing with percents, every item in the problem is represented by two numbers. Every item will be represented by a percent, and then in this case, it's going to be represented by a dollar amount. So on the other side over here, of course, the markup is the 15%. The amount we paid, remember the starting amount, is always 100%. So the amount we charge is 115%. So what that means is we could have, rather than finding 15% and adding it on like this, what we could have done is we could have just gone straight for, hey, it's a markup, so it's a 15% markup, that's 100%. Plus 15% is 115%. So instead of finding 15%, we could have found 115% of the 350. And when we cross multiplied and divided, it would have been 40250. Saves us a little bit of work that way. In fact, there are times where we have to do it this way. After an 8% price increase, a part now costs $450. Find the original price. I want you to try this one in your notes for a second. So looking at this, are we going to use the 8%? First of all, what did you guys come up with for answers? Anybody get one? 414. 414. 414 is a common answer. I will tell you, it's not correct. Most people, that's what they get for an answer on this one when they try it. Because most people take 8% of the 450, they find that and they subtract it out, right? That's where most people would go with it. The problem is that 8% is not based off of the 450. That 8% is based off of whatever the original price was. What we have here is after an 8% increase, what percent are we paying? If you have the original price plus an increase, what's our new price? Well, the original price was 100%. 8% increase. The new price is 108%. And the new price is $450. If we're looking for the original price, we don't need this middle row here. We can cross multiply. 100 times 450 divided by 108 is $416.67. So it's a couple bucks difference. Like I said, it's because that 8% does not come out of the 450, it comes out of the original price. And this would work out if I found 8% of 41667, it would be $33.33. If we add that on, we do get 450. So there's some very subtle differences there. And on the other side of it, if we have discounts, it's the same way. Let's say that after a 12% discount, you pay $352. How much did you save? Now, again, a lot of people would jump in and try to find 12% of 352. Problem is, 
Twelve percent isn't based off of the three fifty two. The three fifty two is after the discount. We have the full price. We subtract the discount to get the price that we paid. So our percents, and again we have dollars on the other side. 100% is the full price. We're going to subtract a 12% discount, meaning we paid 88%. On the other side, we paid $352. Are we looking for the full price? No. We're looking for the amount of the discount here. How much did you save? So now we cross multiply. 12% times 352 divided by 100 should be $48. This little table here, I actually use all the time when we're dealing with percent increase and decrease problems like this because it helps us just line up. Every item in the problem is described by a percent and it's also described by another number. And when you match it up to what it describes, then it tells you how to use them. Every time you're going to have three things. You're going to have a line where you know both numbers, the percent and the other number. You're going to have a line that contains what it is you need to find and the number on the other side. Then you're going to have the line that you're not going to use. Let's do a couple more examples of these increases or decreases. Let's say that after 6% tax, you pay... 583 dollars how much was it before tax I want you to give this one a shot okay so looking at this the way I would do it is I would look at the before tax and again the words you put in here don't matter I'm just putting in words to help me understand what's going on so before tax plus tax gives us the after tax. And again, you can put list price plus tax equals amount paid. It doesn't matter what words you use. For the percents, I know that before tax is 100%. After tax is, or the tax itself is 6%, which means after tax is 106%. On the other side, where's the 583 go? Is that before tax or after tax? After. After the tax, you pay that amount. We are looking for the before tax amount, which is right here, which means you don't need this row in the middle. So we'll do 100 times 583 divided by 106 is? What is it's $550. How many of you came up with 550? Just a couple of you. Let's see. After a discount of 3%, You save $48. How much do you pay? So again, we need to come up with some sort of words to describe this. We're going to be subtracting a discount from something. Now I'm just going to list it as full price minus the discount equals what I paid. And I have dollars on one side and percents on the other again. On the percent side, the full price is 100%. The discount of 3%, so I'm subtracting 3%, which means I paid 97%. 
On the other side, where's the $48 go? You save $48, implying that it is the discount. What am I looking to find? I'm looking to find the full price or how much I paid? How much I paid. So that's what we're looking for right there. So that means I don't need the top row this time. So 97 times 48 divided by 3. Is $1,552. How much I paid. What do you think? Not bad? Okay, well, for you guys, something to practice. Pages 84 through 89 in your textbook, 1 through 53 the odds.